Welcome, my name is Amy Clymer and I am the designer and artist behind Climber Cards. And I am so glad you decided to check out Virtual Climber Cards and use them with your group. They are a great tool to increase engagement and connection and conversation in those virtual sessions. And we definitely need more of that in virtual sessions, right? So in this video, I'm gonna give you just a short overview of how to use the app and just enough to get you started. And then future videos will go into more depth about some specific features. Ready? Let's go. Once you log into Virtual Climber Cards, you will see your dashboard and it will look something like this. Now on my dashboard, I have a few recent sessions here. And so you can see a draft session, an archive session, and an active session. We'll talk about all those. When you very first come in the very first time, you're gonna click over to my sessions. And from there, you're gonna to go to the upper right and click create new session. That's what we're gonna start with. So you're gonna start off and create a session name. I get the session name in there. And if I hit tab, it'll automatically take that name and add it as my, unique link or my access code, which we'll talk about in a moment. But you might not want that specific session. So let's say you are working with a school and their mascot is the Huskies. So you decide, oh, it would be cool if the link had the word Huskies in it. So you can just change it like that. Easy. Actually, I'm going to put Huskies 2020 just to make it a little bit longer. You can add a description if you'd like, or you can skip it. And down here, there are three questions that are important for you to answer. The first one is the most important from a legal perspective, and that is, will minors under the age of 16 be present in your session? And as a facilitator, you are responsible for ensuring that uh, minors don't share personal identifying information within the app. So that would be things like their full name. So if you just click that, it gives you a, a pop-up to remind you that to avoid ask or to ask minors to avoid using their full name. The other cool thing that's built into the app is that, and you'll see this in a moment, is that participants will only be able to enter five letters of their name. So it really kind of prevents the most people from entering their last name. And then when the session is archived, which we'll get to in a minute, that name just gets converted to one initial, their first initial, whatever initial they put in there. Um, and so that means that we're not saving any personal identifying information for a minor. So, and you can use this even if there's not a minor in your session, if you just want to limit people to five characters in their name, um, feel free to toggle that. So we'll leave that on for this one. Um, the next one is, do you want to share this with your organization? So if you have a group plan, a virtual climber cards group plan, then you have the option to share this session with other people who are in your organization. This can be really helpful if you're co-facilitating with them. And this last one, which we'll, we'll talk about in a different video, but there's the option for some decks of cards for them to be flipped. And so if you click that, it gives you some options within there. We'll talk about that in the future. So I'm gonna activate my session and it automatically sends me over to this page. And right now, you still need to add a prompt. The prompt meaning what is the question you want people to answer when they're using Climber Cards. So I'm gonna go up here to these three little lines, which is called a hamburger menu, and I click on that, and I'm gonna click Add First Prompt. And from here, you can, if you click once, you'll see an option for some that are pre-written for you. You're welcome to use one of those, or you can write your own. I'm just gonna click on this one. How are you feeling today? And when I click on that, it automatically shows up. Now, if I share, when I share the link with the participants, so let's say we're having a, a Zoom meeting, and then I will share the link for this session in the chat box with the participants and ask them all to go here. They will see the same thing that you're seeing now. And the link that you share is this link up here in the URL without the word presentation. And I'll show you a couple other places where you can get that link, but that's just one little shortcut that I use a lot. So you can copy that, put that in the chat, and then they come here and they will be able to answer this question. So let's say, oh, I'm feeling kind of talkative today, so I'm picking the telephone. Now I mentioned that they could only put uh, five letters in here. So I actually, if I, if I change this and I try to type my full name, it's not letting me. Uh, let's say my full name was Elizabeth. It's not letting me get past the A because I have toggled that this particular session is for minors. Now, if it wasn't, then you can add whatever name in there that you want. So we're going to put this, create response, 
and then it automatically sends the participants to this page where they will see everybody's responses as they're coming in. Um, and they can also go back, click on show cards, and they can, they'll see all the cards again. And if they want to click another choice, then they can. So now we're seeing two people have finished and you're seeing all the responses in there. And from here, then you can do a number of things from a facilitator perspective, such as invite everybody to share, send them into breakout rooms, um, or just ask people to quietly read. There's a lot of options there, which we'll talk about in another video. Okay, so now let's say it's the end of the session. You've finished having your meeting or your program and you would like to ask them another question. So you can click up here on this hamburger menu again and you'll see, all the, you'll see the prompt that you have, but you wanna create a new prompt. So you write your new prompt and what's interesting is that as you're writing it for a moment, it looks like the other prompt has disappeared, but don't worry, it's still there. So then you finish, you hit create prompt and it automatically sends this prompt over to the next prompt because you haven't told the app that you wanna to go to that new prompt yet, you're still in the current prompt. So if I click down, down here into the cards again, I still have that first prompt of how are you feeling today? Whatever prompt you see visible is the same prompt the participants receive visible and it's the only prompt they can answer. So you wanna pay attention to that to make sure that you're always on the prompt you wanna be on. Now, if I just click this little arrow to next prompt, boom, it makes the, the second prompt come up. And I can click back if I wanna go back. And now if I click show responses, there aren't any because I just put this prompt up, right? So again, whatever you're seeing, the participants are seeing. Okay, so now you've had a great session and you're ready to end. So there, you click exit session in the upper left and then here you'll see two options. You can either exit the session or you can exit an archive. Now, if, and so we're gonna go ahead and exit an archive and I'll talk a bit about that. When you archive a session, it's no longer active and each plan has a different number of allowances for the number of active sessions you can have. Basically, when you're finished using a session and you know you're not gonna use it again, just archive it. You can always unarchive it if you need to. In fact, if I click here on the left to archive sessions, and then I'll see the two, the two different sessions that, that I've archived so far. And I can click on the details, and if I need to activate the session again, I can, no big deal. All right, so let me go back to my sessions. And by the way, if you just exit a session, it will come here, it will show up here in your active sessions. Um, it's, it's not, you're not in it, but it's still active, if you will. You can also have draft sessions in here. Um, so let's look at this draft session. Actually, let's just create a new session so you can see what it would be like to have a draft session. Okay, so I've got another session created and this time I'm gonna save it as a draft instead of activating it. And this is nice when you know you're not quite finished with the session, maybe you're planning a few days in advance. Um, and another place, you, this is another place you could add prompts so you don't have to go into the session. So here, if I clicked add prompt, then same thing, I'll get um, the options that, that are pre-populated or you can type in your own. And I'm just gonna add a couple of these. And from here, you can also drag your props into different orders. So you can maybe you decide, oh, whoops, I meant for that to be the last prompt. And you know, feel free to move these around as much as you want. You also might decide, ooh, that one doesn't sound good. I'm gonna delete it. So you click the little box and then on the right here is the trash can. So click on that trash can. Um, you also might decide, oh, I wanna change this. So click on it and then from here you can edit it. Easy. Um, in here, you can edit the details. So if you decide, oh, I want to change the name of this, or you want to change the name of the access link, you can do that. You can also add a description. Yeah, so you can pretty much change everything even once you've created it. So look, and then from here is another place where you can copy that link. So whenever you're ready to share it with the group, you can copy that link. You could also copy the code. Uh, let me show you what I mean, but what, how you might use that code. So if you go directly into Climber Cards, I have to log out. Um, if a participant shows up on this page, they can enter the code and join the session. And in this case, the session isn't active yet, so it's saying it looks like we're lost. But let's see, if I go back, if I make the session active, we're gonna activate it. Oops, it's wanting me to log in again. And I enter it 
this is the this is what's live. So from here, if I type in another sample session, November, because I didn't type it right, <laughs> now I can go in and the, and I'm in there now. The last thing I want to mention is one more feature, and that is that when you're when you're creating a new session, depending on which level of virtual climber cards you have, you have the option to select different decks. So the original climber card deck, which you've been seeing this whole video, is included with every option. But um, if you get beyond the basic level, you get some additional decks. So um, all you need to do is when you're in here in the details of your session, click on deck, and then all the decks available will be listed there. So right now there's another one called People and Technology. There's a few other climber cards decks coming as of the recording of this video, so they will be available pretty soon. Um, and if you want to, and here's just a quick view of what the people in technology deck look like. There you go. So this is the people in technology deck. Um, it's great for any conversations, well, really that involve people or technology, or you want to look at things in a different way. There's also a deck of emotion words that are coming, which could be particularly helpful if you have a question around feelings, or if you want to get people to talk about their feelings in a new way. Um, you also have the option with one of the higher level plans to upload your own decks of cards. So if you have created a deck and you have the rights to the images to upload, you have the rights to the images, then you can upload them and use them with your groups. These, when you upload a deck, it is only available for you or your organization is not available for everybody. So it's still private to you. Um, so you have that option as well. All right, I think I've given you enough to get started. You've learned about the different types of sessions, archive, drafts, active sessions, and you've also learned how to find that link that you need to share with participants and how to view their results. There will be other videos with more features and more uh, components of the virtual climber cards available that you can check out as well. Have fun getting started. Bye.